Hey y'all, happy Saturday. Um, I'm still not doing Whitney Wednesday for right now, um, but I wanted to come on, I wanted to like post a video out of obedience because I've been hearing a word all week, right? So um, Sunday, I was listening to my pastor, Rachel Leach. I know my church is still in Charlotte, but I'm in Memphis. So I was listening to my pastor and he was preaching and during his sermon he said the word masterpiece right so i was just like you know i was listening to the sermon of course but after he said that word i don't know why that word you know just stuck out to me but i just been hearing masterpiece all week so i'm just like okay lord so i was like you know and the holy spirit put it on my heart you know to come before y'all and just like say something about a masterpiece i'm like okay and you know i don't i don't get on social media and do a lot of talking and stuff like that i don't really like that you know i do i'm a, I'm a teacher so i do my tutorials you know i do my thing you know i keep it moving um i don't really stick around too long um but i'm i'm just doing what i was told and um i'm just coming before y'all um with all of my makeup in front of me and for those of you who know how much makeup i have imagine the situation in front of me right now <laughs> i don't know what type of look i'm going to do but uh i guess y'all just gonna walk through this thing with me you know the good the bad and the ugly i don't know what colors i'm gonna use so i got every palette almost that i have in front of me so let's go all right y'all i got everything here and i haven't done my skincare yet i haven't done anything but um before we get into it let's pray okay so father god we thank you lord god so much for this day lord god we thank you lord god for giving us breath in our lungs lord god i thank you lord god for impressing it upon my heart to come before your people today lord god i thank you lord god that you are decreasing me lord god and you're increasing in me oh god use my tongue to say whatever it is that you want to say to your people lord god as i as i sit here today lord god and i create this masterpiece, Lord God, through the talents that you've given me, oh God, I ask you, Lord God, that you work creatively through my hands. I thank you, Lord God, that I have a creative and a powerful mind, Lord God. And I just thank you, Father God, that I am doing the thing that you are asking me to do today, Lord God. Take me completely out of it, Lord God. I die to my flesh today, Lord God. And I am open, Lord God, and I'm surrendering myself, Lord God, to the things that you want to do through me and the things that you want to say through me today. In the name of Jesus. So, let's do the skincare. So, the, the, I was going to say the title of my message, y'all. <laughs> that is not what I came to do, but, <laughs> um, the question that, um, Holy Spirit posed to me this week is, are you God's masterpiece? And I was like, so i was just like you know okay you know are you guys masterpiece you know and he was just taking me through just you know all of this stuff you know just being a makeup artist and you know all of that my mind was just going y'all and i am a thinker so i'll just sit you know and i'll just think of things you know and i'll create things and i don't really consider myself to be a creative person but i'm i consider myself to be a go with the flow type person right so, um, you know, Holy Spirit said, you know, are you God's masterpiece? And he was just taking my mind just in so many different directions. So, um, a lot of times, and you know, when, when he asked me that question, you know, are you, are you God's masterpiece? He, I went on Google and I was looking up some artists, you know, that created works of art that we consider to be masterpieces, Right like you know van gogh and picasso and rembrandt and jean-michel basquiat and you know all of those people that we consider to be you know these great artists you know even even um andy warhol which is like one of my favorites but i looked at some of their pieces of work and the eras that they created these things and you know people didn't really consider them consider them to be masterpieces you know the works of art that they created so i was just like 
I was just like, dang, Lord, you know, we have all of these people, you know, creating all of these works of art that we look at in the worth like millions of dollars. And we like, oh, you know, like they had to be, you know, received well. And, you know, people back then must have been so honored, you know, to be in their presence and all of that stuff. But as I was reading, like the history behind some of the works of art, a lot of people really weren't checking for those artists. And they weren't checking for like the the works of art that they created. Um, and I was looking at the Mona Lisa, right? So we look at the Mona Lisa now, and of course it has a price tag on it, but we look at it now as priceless. You know, it's just such a timeless work of art. You know, you have if you have, you know, a Mona Lisa, you kill in the game, right? But I was doing some research and the Mona Lisa, it was in a it was in the Louvre in France. I think the Louvre is in France. The, I don't know. Check my facts, but it was in the Louvre. So, you know, people will come through, you know, they look at it and all of that, but the Mona Lisa didn't get its fame, so to speak, until somebody stole it. Right? And I didn't know that until yesterday. So somebody stole it from the Louvre and it was missing for maybe like two months. So during those two months, people were just like, you know, where, you know, where is this painting? Where is this painting? So everybody was checking for the Mona Lisa. So after they found it, the, of course they were grateful, grateful for the fact that they did find it, but it really got like a high level of notoriety. And it's just like, wow. And you know, I was thinking, I was just like, you know what? That nobody was really checking for that masterpiece, you know? And they didn't even consider it a masterpiece, right? It's not until it went missing that they said, okay, where is this great work of art, right? So, and I'm sure, you know, when Da Vinci was creating the Mona Lisa, I don't really know what his, you know, his thought process was or you know any of that but i can think of you know as an artist when you create something it's like oh you know people are gonna love this or at least you hope they do um so you know creating art is just like oh you know it's so many moving parts that go into it and you know creating art is not always a pretty process um so when you when you think of all of those moving parts, of course, like as I was going through all these things in my mind, you know, the Holy Spirit was just like, think about the things that had to go into you to create the masterpiece that you are, right? And you know, y'all y'all that know me personally know that I'm I only speak from experience. So, you know, all of the things that have happened in my life, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly, they were all you know, brush strokes or different colors or, you know, different textures and all of these things that are going into the masterpiece that is Whitney, you know, and we don't, you know, consider ourselves to be masterpieces a lot of times because, you know, we get caught up, you know, we look at our lives and we're just like, Lord, like, don't, like, nobody's interested in my life. Don't nobody want to hear me. Don't nobody want to see me and, you know, all of that, but you know, just sitting there and realizing, you know, like, Lord, okay, you know, I am your masterpiece, you know, and I, I, I thank, I thank God every day, you know, for the things that I go through, I don't like it, <laughs> but like I said, it's, it's what makes me, me, so, <laughs> the, the, you know, the masterpiece that is me, I'm going to, you know, tell y'all my testimony. I'm going to be real transparent today, y'all. You know, and in me saying that I'm a masterpiece, it's just like, I may not consider myself to be a masterpiece, but I know that I'm a masterpiece in you, you know, because I know that I was created, I was fearfully and wonderfully made. I was created, you know, in my mother's womb, you know, and you knew me before I was created, right? So, you know, that alone told me, like, you know, Lord, you knew me before I was created. So, clearly, there's a purpose for me being here. There's a reason, you know. So, I have something to do, you know. So, even if nobody else sees me as a masterpiece, 
I'm your masterpiece, you know? And I have to carry myself that way. I can't let the enemy let me sit there and, you know, beat myself up and say, you know, oh, you're not this, you're not that. Who cares, you know? All the artists that created their masterpieces, they were just being authentically them. You know, and like I said, you know, thinking of the people of the era when I was doing my research, a lot of people didn't call their works of art masterpieces. They were probably, you know, crazy people like all of the, you know, some of the artists out there can second this. But, you know, a lot of times artists aren't really received well, you know, because we're the weirdos or, you know, we do all of this stuff, you know, and we think a different way. So... You know, those artists probably weren't received the way that they wish they had been, but that's okay, you know? That's neither here nor there. But, you know, in in asking the question, you know, are you God's masterpiece? Yes, I'm God's masterpiece, you know? He knit me together perfectly. He made me the person that I am. He gave me the personality that I have. He gave me the voice that I have, you know? And he gave me a platform he gave me a purpose you know am I gonna live out that purpose or am I just gonna sit here and go over what I am or what I'm not so in in it well I'm, I'm in Memphis now but I don't I don't think I've ever told y'all like everything that went into me coming here um but you know I was living in Charlotte for about eight years and coronavirus hit, right? So I'm um, in the military, of course. So, you know, I was, I went to New York for, you know, COVID, on COVID relief efforts. And while I was there, I lost my job, my civilian job, lost my civilian job. Uh, my roommate and I couldn't move into our apartment and my car was in the shop so I didn't have no car so I didn't have a car a place to live or my civilian job you know when I got back to Charlotte so I said you know what forget all of that I was like you know I ain't got no choice but I'm going home you know I really didn't want to go home but that was really the only choice that I had at the moment. So I said, hey, I'm just going to bite the bullet and I'm going to do my thing. And for those of you who don't know already, I'm a Christian, you know, and I pray at every step. You know, I'm not perfect, but I pray because I'm just like, you know, Lord, I don't want to just be out here living life on my own. I need you to guide me. I need you to tell me what I'm doing here. You know, you've ordered my steps, so I need you to let me know which direction I need to take. So he gave me peace about coming home. So, you know, that's what I did. I came home and, you know, I was just applying for jobs and all that because I'm a hustler, y'all. Okay? Like, she gonna find some type of way to work. So I was just looking for jobs and everything, like overseas, everything. You know, because I didn't, I didn't want to come home. I'll be 35 in a few weeks. And I'm just like, you know, Lord, I'm too old for this. You know, I, I shouldn't be going. Sorry, y'all. Um, I was like, you know, Lord, I'm too old for this. I shouldn't be going through this. You know, I I should have been in a better financial position. And just all of these things were just going through my mind, right? So, and I told y'all, I don't know what look I'm finna do. So, I'm just trying to do things. So I don't know where this is going. But um, I was just like, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm too old for this. I shouldn't be going through this. I shouldn't be in this position. So, let me do everything I can to get out of, out of this position as fast as I can. Um, so in that, you know, I was like, you know, I'll probably be here for two, three months at tops, right? So, you know, I'm applying for jobs, you know, and, you know, I'm hopeful, just enjoying my family, getting a chance to see them. And I started getting emails, you know, those we regret to inform you email, right? So I'm just like, okay you know it, it, it's fine it's fine you know i make the best of every situation i'm like you know it's cool 
I am completely okay with this. You know, something to work out has to, right? So kept applying for jobs, kept applying for jobs. And I would get email after email after email of, you know, we regret to inform you. We regret to inform you. We regret to inform you. Okay. So this was maybe about two or three months in. And I'm starting to get frustrated because I'm just like, okay, Lord, you know, and if I cry, y'all don't judge me, right? I get a little emotional, but it's just like, you know, Lord, I try to my best, you know, to do what it is that you tell me to do. And, you know, I try to read my word, you know, and seek out, you know, instruction and all of this. And it's just like, you know, why am I here? Like, I never wanted to be here. You know, I didn't want to be here. So why am I here? And um, I, I really wasn't getting no answers from God up or anything so i'm just like okay you know i'm gonna keep on praying and i'm gonna keep asking you know lord why am i here why am i here and in all of that you know i got so caught up in myself and i started to you know suffer from some depression you know i would stay in the bed and i would i just didn't want to talk to anybody and y'all know i love to laugh right i love to laugh so I would find, you know, I would try my best, you know, to find ways to make myself laugh or, you know, lift myself up, but nothing really seemed to work. You know, and I was trying to read my word, but I would get distracted. And I was just like, you know, Lord, what is going on with me? Like, I really, really need you to help me get out of this place because I'm not used to this. I'm used to being the happy one, you know, that people can call and make them happy. You know, brighten up the room and crack a joke or, you know, something like that. But that's, that's not where I was. And it was such a dark place for me. And I continued. I ended up getting a job here in Memphis. I really didn't want to, but I was like, you know, Lord, I'm, I'm not just gonna, you know, sit and be idle. You know, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna work and I'm gonna, you know, do my thing. So... I started to work here um, and honestly y'all it was in a field that I always wanted to work in but I never got the opportunity to work in right so that in itself was a blessing but I didn't really see it like that I was ready to go so I was working in this field and I was getting getting all of this experience and I was just like okay Lord you know cool but I'm still ready to go so after that, you know, some, um, some, some, how do I word this? They weren't really taking the best precautions when it came to COVID. So I had to get out of there, right? <laughs> you know, I had to protect myself, protect my mama, all of that. So I got out of there. So, you know, I came out and, you know, I got back to hustling legally. Let me put that out there. Um, but during that time, you know, time was passing. I'm still applying for jobs. I'm still doing my thing. And I'm just like at the point where, you know, I kept getting the, we regret to inform you emails. And I'm just like, Lord, I, I don't know what to do, you know, and I have my YouTube platform and I didn't really want to do it no more. Y'all, I really didn't. And the whole time I'm just like, you know, Lord, you know, my life does not look anything the way I want it to. I know that you have your hand on me, but I don't I don't understand this. I don't know where I am. I don't know, you know, what to do. And I was like, you know, Lord, you said in your word that if a man lacks wisdom, let him ask for it. I was like, Lord, give me wisdom on this thing. I don't I don't I'm in unfamiliar territory and I don't know what to do. So um I just kept going. <laughs> I said, you know, Lord, I'm going I'm to keep going. I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to turn, but I'm just going to keep going. And y'all, the whole time, and you know, I feel like I'm pretty good at hearing God, you know, like knowing his voice. But I'm just like, Lord, I don't, I don't really think, I don't really think you're saying anything, right? 
But in, in all of that time, y'all, where I'm just like, you know, Lord, say something, say something, say something. I was so busy trying to focus on hearing him and, you know, him saying something to me. I didn't realize the things that he was doing. Right. So in all of my, you know, depression and all of my sadness and all of that, he was creating my masterpiece the whole time because I never went without. You know, I I didn't have my job anymore and I wasn't making as much money as I was before. But I never went without, you know, I would get phone calls and, you know, money would co come from everywhere. And, you know, like just doors were just opening. And I said, you know, Lord, is this the place you wanted me to be in the whole time? You know, because when I was in Charlotte, I would fight coming back to Memphis tooth and nail. So, you know, I would always tell my mom when I was in Charlotte, I said, you know, I don't care how much I have to struggle while I'm here. I'm a struggle because I don't want to come back there, you know, because what what coming back here signified to me was failure. You know, so I was fighting, I was fighting, I was fighting. I was like, you know, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. So, like I said, you know, I ended up back. And, you know, doors started opening for me and, you know, money was just coming out of everywhere. And I'm just like, Lord, like, what? really? Like, okay, you know, I don't want to be here, but, you know, thank you so much for all of these things, you know, that you're doing. So, you know, just, just going through everything and just, you know, living my life, I was still in a place where it's just like, yeah, Lord, you, you're doing all of this stuff, but I still don't understand why you have to do all of this stuff here. You know, why couldn't you take me back to Charlotte and give me all of these blessings and open all of these doors and do all this, you know, but I said, you know, you know more than me, your ways are higher than my ways, so I'm just going to do what you tell me to do, whether I like it or not. So, you know, just going through, you know, and, the, you know, and this is like all of the stuff I've been thinking this week. And, you know, just going through knowing that, you know, I am God's masterpiece. And, you know, he was just telling me, asking me, you know, the whole week, you know, are you God's masterpiece? Are you God's masterpiece? So I I felt in my in my heart you know, and in my spirit that he wanted me to come live, you know, and do, well, no, I ain't gonna say I felt, I know that this was him telling me to do this because I wouldn't do this on my own. Okay. So let me retract that. <laughs> God brought me on here to ask you, you know, are you God's masterpiece? You know, are you, are you looking at the things he's doing? You know, instead of just sitting there trying to figure it out on your, figure it out on your own. Are you looking at what he's doing? Are you thanking him for the things that he's doing? You know, and a lot of times when we go through stuff, we're just like, Lord, like, get me out of here. You know, I don't want to go through this. I don't want to do this. But he's creating the masterpiece in us going through the things that we go through. And, you know, I've always heard, you know, we go through things for other people, you know, to try to, to help to pull other people out. And I don't know about y'all, but when I go through stuff, I'm like, Lord, I don't care. I'm not trying to pull nobody else out. I don't want to go through this. I don't want this. I'm good, right? But we have to go through these things in order to be effective witnesses, in order to show people the grace of God and how God brought us through all of these things. So I'm kind of, as I, you know, as I go through life now, I'm just like, all right, Lord, I know I got to go, you know, I'm, I got to go through stuff. You know, Jesus went through stuff. So who am I to think that I'm not going to have to go through anything, right? But I go through it now with a completely different perspective, you know. And, you know, like I said, all week I've been hearing, you know, masterpiece, masterpiece, masterpiece. And I don't, I didn't, I didn't know how God was going to bring that forth. But I knew I heard what I heard. I got back on my grind, you know, and I was doing YouTube and I had my platform, all of that. But, you know, during that time I was here, you know, I I was suffering from the depression and, you know, I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to go to the gym. I really didn't want to do anything, you know, so I would try to find ways, you know, to make myself happy or, you know, to take my mind off of things when, 
you know, it, and it just seemed like it just wasn't happening. You know, I wanted to go home. I wanted to get back to my life, you know, because I had my groove. You know, I'm in my 30s and I'm in Charlotte. I'm doing my thing. Um, So I, I, I wanted to go back home. You know, I was homesick. I was crying. And I'm just like, Lord, like, I got to get out of here. Um, so, you know, I still had to continue to do Whitney Wednesday and, you know, all of that because I don't know if I told y'all, I didn't want to do YouTube either. Like when I started, I did not want to do it, but you know, the Holy Spirit was like, I said, you know, Lord, if you want me to do this thing, you gonna have to let me know, right? You have to give me a sign. <laughs> so before I could even get it out of my mouth good. He let me know what it was. So I was like, okay. So, you know, I did it. I'm doing it. Um, but I, you know, I still had to continue to do, you know, Whitney Wednesday and try to keep as much normalcy as possible. So during during the during that time I was, you know, doing Whitney Wednesday and you know, I didn't want to. You know, a lot of times when when that camera would go off the tears would fall even in between even in between the takes when i do my eyeshadow i have to go back and fix my eyeshadow cuz i'm over here dropping all these tears <laughs> you know because i was unhappy so i said you know lord i'm still going to continue to profess your word i'm still going to continue to do this thing you know i'm going to i'm going to keep my head i'm going to keep my head up you know i'm going to smile i'm going to i'm going to do whatever i need to do um, and you know, I also don't like people in my business. Like I'm real private. That's another reason why I don't get on social media and talk and all of that. Cause I'm just, just be in my bubble, you know, just be doing my thing. So, um, I said, you know, Lord, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on, you know, but you know, I'm going to keep my head up. I'm going to keep doing my thing. Um, Hold on, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with these colors. Because I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So. I guess I'm just going to jump. I guess I'll do this blue. Anyway. um, I was just like, you know, Lord, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. So I, I just have to do anything I can, you know, to keep myself up. Um, so during that time, you know, of course I'm praying, I'm listening to my pastors, you know, and I'm just, like I said, I'm just trying to keep my, keep my sense of normalcy. Um, and, you know, I, I was, hold on y'all, I'm sorry. I'm working with this loose pig pigment and it's. A little messy but um i'm just keeping my head up and i'm just like you know lord you you know do what you do what you want to do in my life this is not how i imagine my life but i know your ways are higher than my ways your thoughts are greater than my thoughts so you know you put me here so help me with this thing because i i don't know what i'm doing and i have been here now for a year, a little bit over a year. Um, and I never thought that I would come to the place where I was ever comfortable being here, but I'm finally at that place. And yes, you know, I still do want to go home, but you know, like I said, the Holy Spirit has been, you know, telling me masterpiece, masterpiece. And, you know, just like those artists, a lot of different, a lot of different moving parts go into it, you know, that make it the masterpiece. We don't always see the masterpiece when we're in the mess, you know, when we feel like we're in the mess, but it's all working together, working together for our good. You know, everything is happening for a reason. And looking at the person that I was when I first got here, and the person that I am now, I see a dramatic difference. 
you know, and I'm, of course, I'm not done growing, you know, because God is always working on us, right? But I'm just like, okay, Lord, like, I see what you were doing there. And, you know, God ain't got to tell us nothing, y'all. He really does not have to tell us anything. But, you know, for him to kind of let me in on what it is that he was doing, it it really just makes me love God even more. And it's just like, you know, wow, you know, you're you're the creator of the universe, yet you're taking time to, you know, give me these little nuggets and these little breadcrumbs and, you know, these little things that let me know that you hear me when I pray and you still love me even though, you know, I get upset with you and I think like, you know, my life should have been this or my life should have been that. You know, and just just for a God, you know, to consider us the way that He does is just such such a miracle for me, you know. And when I when I heard my pastor say masterpiece, I was just like, wow, like like we are all masterpieces, you know. And we often compare ourselves to other people, and we're just like, you know, why is my life? Why did my life turn out the way theirs did, or? You know, why didn't I, I should have done, you know, what they did. And, you know, Whitney, why didn't you do it like this? Why didn't you do it like that? It wasn't for me to do it like that. It was for me to ask God what was his plan for my life. You know, Lord, how do you want me to walk this thing out? What does this look like for me? You know, so that that's that's where I am. Um, and you know, of course, you know, I'm still, we're, we're still hard on ourselves, but I pose the question, are you God's masterpiece? You know, and I can answer that question only for myself. I am God's masterpiece, you know, and I'm a masterpiece that he's still building. He's still creating. He's still, you know, adding those textures. He's, he's still adding those colors. He's still adding, you know, different layers of me that make me me and make me his masterpiece you know make me his work of art and you know and even in me putting all these colors and stuff together you know to create this face you know he let me know that you know think about when you're doing your makeup you put all of these moving parts and you know some people when i was working in sephora y'all People would just stop, you know, and they'd watch. And I'm, I'm, I'm a little shy, <laughs> right? And I don't really like people, you know, like stopping and gawking and stuff like that. But doing makeup and teaching was the only time I was completely okay with it. And I was like, wow. <laughs> because I'm I'm a real, you know, behind the scenes type of girl. I don't I don't have to be out front. I, I, don't, I don't need none of that. But that was the only time I was okay with being, you know, open to people watching and, you know, standing around and all of that. And I was just like, you know, that's crazy that that's the only time I'm comfortable with that, you know, for me. You know, that might not mean much to y'all, but for me, that's that's huge. You know, and that was a huge revelation that, you know, the Holy Spirit gave me. I'm so comfortable in that element. I don't care who's watching. You know, it's not going to mess up. It's not going to mess up my rhythm. It's not going to mess up anything. You know, even if you stop me in that moment to ask me a question, I'm still going to keep going because I know what I'm doing and I'm in my stride. Right? So, what was my point for saying that? I don't really remember, but whatever. I'm just going to keep going. Um... But, you know, all of these, all of these moving parts that it takes to create a face or, you know, create a painting or all of these things that we as artists create, it's a masterpiece, you know, and we have a, we have an end goal for that masterpiece, even though, you know, it doesn't go always the way that we want it to. Because, you know, sometimes I'll do a face and I'll completely mess up. You know, and I got to go back to the drawing board. I'll mess up my face. I'll mess up somebody else's. And it's just like, let me, <laughs> let me rethink this, you know? And, you know, I don't, I don't mind making those mistakes. And sometimes I tell my clients, like, yeah, I completely messed up your face, girl. So let me go back and fix this. Amen. <laughs> right? 
but you know in me creating that masterpiece it's a, it's a lot of bumps and it's a lot of bruises and it's a lot of things that you know i'm gonna learn going into that and i have to be okay with that because my journey or you know yeah my journey to get to the perfect face will not look the same as your your Jackie Ionas or your um your Bobby Browns or you know it it may not look like theirs you know and I have to be okay with that because I have to realize that Lord I'm your masterpiece you know I am your masterpiece I am your masterpiece and you have given me the talent to create my own masterpiece so what what journey would you have me what road would you have me travel to make this the best masterpiece possible so in me you know creating this physical masterpiece of what we call makeup artistry you know i'm realizing to embrace the the things that make my life a masterpiece you know the things that make my life you know worthy of you know I guess I wouldn't say worthy but I'm embracing the things that make my life my life you know whatever that might look like even though it doesn't look like yours it's cool you know because God made me me for a reason. He didn't make me you. And I'm not going to try to be you. Because that ain't who he created me to be. So. I'm going to continue to create this. You know. I'm going to continue to do the things that he's put on my heart to do the way he's put it on my heart to do it, you know? Not try to step out and look like somebody else, but do my thing the way God wants me to do it. So, I ain't mean to get on here and like, talk your heads off or nothing. But I just wanted to power mode my phone about to die i i i didn't mean to get on here you know i talk y'all heads off or nothing but i did want to get on here just to get some transparency going you know and to just be open and to you know be obedient and just talk to y'all I had a good time. <laughs> and I'm still not done with this face, y'all. I'm still not finished. It's still a journey, but I'm going to keep going. Because all I got left to do is my lashes and my lips. And I already got some lashes on, but you can't really see them from here, so. Need some little bit more extra. Right? And y'all know something I just thought about. I know up under my skin, like I still have these blemishes. I still have these spots. I still have these scars. But you know, we step out and we put on this face that we want people to see yeah they know we probably got blemishes on today somewhere right they know we probably have been through some things but they don't really know exactly what the scars and the blemishes look like right but wait for it a lot of times we uncover the blemishes that we think are going to add beauty to our lives, right? Without showing every single blemish that we have, okay? We uncover the ones that we think, oh, 
this will be nice and you know this might get a nod from whoever right right but we also have to what well, we all have to remember i know that also but we all gotta remember that it's okay to expose those scars sometimes you know don't just go around bearing your soul to everybody because everybody can't handle it you know what i'm saying i i stay only relegated to those that you know will pray for you or you know that'll lift you up because you can't go around telling everybody everything you know what i'm saying i'm coming to y'all out of obedience i wouldn't normally do this you know come on social media and bear my soul because i feel like that ain't nobody's business right but you know sometimes you know when god wants to use your life as a testimony for somebody even if it's just one person he's going to cause you to go out there and you know uncover yourself but in you uncovering yourself, he's also giving you the grace to keep you covered. Right? So, thank y'all so much for sitting here with me as I created this makeup artistry masterpiece. Right? And just remember, that you are God's masterpiece. No matter what you look like, no matter what you've been through, no matter what your mask looks like, no matter what your internal injuries or scars or whatever look like, you're still God's masterpiece. And you still got to seek him to see how he's going to show your masterpiece off. Okay? So I love y'all. I am... Probably gonna go wash my face. <laughs> I don't know, but I might not. I'll, I'll, this did not go in the direction that I thought it would, but I like it. I think it's cute. You know, this is way out of my element, but I might do this a little bit more often because I like it. I like it. It's taking me out of my element, but I'm still comfortable. All right. So bye, y'all. Y'all be blessed. Okay. Mwah.